And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs, a time when a special man came forward a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear. A man whom they took prisoner and hid away. A man whose name is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil, about your life and what it will become, a story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years. A story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, you hey wav hey. Olam shall, shall you hey wav hey. The universe of you hey wav hey. Brought to you by the nation of you working for you and your future. Good or evil, life or death, this is your choice in this, the year 6002, the year of judgment. Shalom and welcome to the universe of Yahweh. My name is Josiah Israel and I am your host. For over seven years now, we have been discussing some of the things the Bible said would occur in the Day of Judgment. We warned you that the weather was going to change and that the powerful forces of nature were going to bring terrible destruction upon America and the world and that it was going to get worse and worse and worse, and it has. We alerted you that violence in the public schools was going to increase, and it has. We showed you in the scriptures that forewarned of wickedness in high places, and we are witnessing today gross misconduct and serious crimes being committed by some of our highest elected officials. What lies ahead for America and the world is nothing less than the proliferation of deadly diseases and plagues as foretold in the Bible. But there is hope. The Bible tells us that at the end, the Messiah would be revealed. And at that time, he would save the righteous from this impending destruction. That one, the Messiah, is Yahweh bin Yahweh. So we invite you to join us in the universe of Yahweh, featuring the commandments of Yahweh and the Messiah revealed. First, the commandments of Yahweh. For 6,000 years, we have been suffering at the hands of rulers who transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Heh and teach all people throughout the earth to transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Heh. In order to have peace, love, and harmony upon the earth, we must return to keeping the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of yud heh wav -Heh. All of us have been taught that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do not count today. In this series, we will show you that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do count, and that if we govern our lives according to these commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of God yud heh wav -Heh, 
then we will have peace and goodwill upon the earth forever. We invite you to study along with us. However, in order to do so, you must have the following tools. A King James Version of the Bible, several dictionaries, the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, a set of encyclopedias, Hebrew and Greek lexicons, a thesaurus, and a synonym finder. Shalom. My name is Ben Kayo Bethel Yishraya. We are discussing the commandments of Yahweh. Many people believe that the first commandments were given to Moses. But the fact is, the first two commandments ever given to man were given to Adam, which were to dress and to keep the Garden of Eden. We are discussing the second commandment, which was to keep the Garden of Eden. We are continuing our discussion of the various colors and flavors of the word keep. Following our usual pattern, let us highlight some of the main points of view we covered last week. We told you that another meaning of the word keep is mark. Mark was defined as a symbol which is used in giving information. It was also defined as an action which is understood to represent or show a characteristic of a person. A symbol, we told you, is synonymous to code, and code by definition means a set of written rules which state how people in a particular country should behave. In view of these facts, we concluded that to keep the Garden of Eden means that Yahweh commanded Adam to give the people a set of written rules which stated how they should behave in the Garden of Eden. We learned that these written rules were in fact the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of Yahweh. We read Romans chapter 15 verse 4, which established that these written commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of Yahweh are the same written rules by which we must govern our behavior today. We expressed that when we keep the commandments of Yahweh, our character will be markedly distinguishable from those who do not. Some of the characteristics of Yahweh were described in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4. We explain that Yahweh is without transgression of the law. He is just in all his dealings. He is straightforward, open, honest, and right in all his decisions. We told you that we too must have this identical character. Further, we showed you in 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, that having the identical character of Yahweh is the only way we can show that we love him. We concluded by stressing that keeping the commandments of Yahweh is not distressing, painful, oppressing, or sorrowful, but on the contrary, following the laws of man has brought all of these things upon us. Today, we will continue our discussion of the second direct commandment that Yahweh gave to man, Adam, which was to keep the Garden of Eden, heaven. Documented in the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible, copyright 1990, in the Hebrew Chaldee Dictionary, on page 118, reference number 8104, keep in Hebrew is shamar, and another one of its meanings is reserve. To keep the Garden of Eden means to reserve the Garden of Eden. Let's take a journey into the insides of the word reserve. According to the Synonym Finder by J.I. Rodell, copyright 1978, on page 1024, reserve is equivalent to husband. 
referenced in Webster's Ninth New Collegiate Dictionary, copyright 1989, on page 588. Husband comes from the Old English word husbanda, and it means master of a house. On page 731, master is defined as one having control. On page 584, house means household. Webster's Universal College Dictionary, copyright 1997, on page 395, defines household as a family including any servants. Therefore, reserve as it relates to keep means that Yahweh commanded Adam to have control over his family, the family of Yahweh, including any servants who sojourned in the land. Yahweh commanded Adam to have control. Let's examine what this really means. Stated in Webster's Universal College Dictionary on page 177, control by definition means a legal means of regulation or restraint. According to the Synonym Finder by J.I. Rodale, page 653, Legal is synonymous to prescribed. Prescribe on page 928 means the same as to establish and to impose. On page 1006, regulation is equivalent to law and ordinance. On page 1030, restraint is described as restriction, which means condition or limitation. Another meaning of control is the prevention of the flourishing or spread of something undesirable. On the authority of the American Heritage College Dictionary, copyright 1993, on page 1085, prevent means to keep from happening. Taking all of these facts into consideration, we can assert with absolute certainty that to reserve the Garden of Eden means that Yahweh commanded Adam to establish and impose the laws and ordinances of Yahweh upon the family of Yahweh, including any servants who sojourned in the land. This set forth certain conditions and limitations by which to govern their behavior. These conditions and limitations were for the purpose of keeping the flourishing and spread of undesirable things from happening. These restrictions are recorded or written in this book, the Bible, so that we, the descendants of Adam, including servants who dwell among us on the earth today, can make up our own minds to follow the laws and ordinances set forth by Yahweh himself. Unlike the laws of man, there is one law for all. As the family of Yahweh is, so shall the stranger be who chooses to keep the laws and ordinances of Yahweh. According to Numbers, chapter 15, verses 15 and 16, which reads, One ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation and also for the stranger that sojourneth with you, an ordinance forever in your generations. As ye are, so shall the stranger be before Yahweh. One law and one manner shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourneth with you. The laws, ordinances, and restrictions of Yahweh are the keys to preventing the flourishing or spread of any diseases among Adam, his descendants, and the families of the earth. Since Yahweh created all things, then he alone would know or have the answer to perfect health. It is a fact that we are what we eat, 
And Yahweh established and imposed strict laws and ordinances which prohibit us from eating or even touching certain foods that have deadly effects upon our bodies. Let us open our Bibles and read about one such law in the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verses 7 and 8, which reads, And the swine, pig, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. As we have just read in the Holy Bible, we are not only forbidden from eating pork, but we are also forbidden from even touching pork or the swine or the pig in any way, shape, or fashion. Modern scientists have proven through scientific research that pork meat contains 999 different worms, which cause 999 different types of diseases, to name a few, high blood, low blood, hypertension, strokes, tumors, and cancers. In addition, pork meat also causes cataracts of the eyes, arthritis, lumbago, gout, skin eruptions, acne, heart attacks, and many, many others. The whole earth is cursed with sickness and diseases because we have transgressed the laws of Yahweh. All who teach that the laws of Yahweh do not count today are encouraging the people to break the covenant of Yahweh. And breaking the covenant of Yahweh has brought about all the undesirable destruction and desolation we see upon the earth today. Let's open our Bibles and read about this in Isaiah chapter 24, verses 5 and 6, which reads, The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. Because we have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, and broken the everlasting covenant of Yahweh, the earth is cursed, and all the people of the earth are burned or destroyed and only a few men are left who keep the laws and ordinances of Yahweh. Just as Yahweh commanded Adam to reserve the Garden of Eden, in like manner, the second Adam, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is here today teaching the inhabitants of the earth to keep the laws and ordinances of Yahweh, which is the only way the people of the earth will be blessed with good health and a safe way of life. Next week, we will continue our discussion of the commandments of Yahweh. I bear witness to you today that the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Mahdi is here. I bear, I bear witness, witness to you today, today that, that Shiloh, Shiloh is here. here. I, bear I bear witness, witness to, you to you today that the great light is here. here. I bear I witness to you today, today that the Grand Master of the Celestial Lodge, Architect of the Universe, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Enlightened One is here. I bear, I bear witness to you today that the one all religion has been speaking of for over 6,000 years is here. Thank you for listening and join us next week 
as we continue our discussion of the commandments of Yahweh. What does eternal life mean? Eternal life means life without end. It means forever. Not only during the time of one's natural life, but through endless ages of eternal life and blessedness. To find out more, read The Messiah Revealed by Yahweh Ben Yahweh. To order, call us at 1-800-967-7337 or Check out our new website and online bookstore at www.yahwehbenyahweh.com. Who is worthy? Who is worthy to open the book? Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. At the end of time of evil rule, the Anointed One, the Messiah, shall appear. In 1979, Yahweh Ben Yahweh came to Miami and became the spiritual leader and founder of the nation of Yahweh. Although he took a vow of poverty, in seven years he guided the nation to amass a $250 million empire. Under his direction, the nation of Yahweh has grown to encompass disciples, followers, and supporters in over 1,300 cities within the U.S. and 16 foreign countries. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is bringing about changes in the lives of individuals and is giving the world the keys to success in life, politically, economically, educationally, socially, and spiritually. The Messiah, Yahweh Ben Yahweh, is described by four terms which not only parallel the four Gospels, but they are also their absolute foundation. And in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 15, it reads, In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness, Yahweh ben Yahweh, to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. The other three phrases and their passages are, my servant, the branch, as seen in the book of Mark. The foundation is Zechariah chapter 3, verse 8, which says in part, Behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch, referring to the Messiah's service to Yahweh. The man whose name is the branch, as seen in the book of Luke. The foundation is Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12 which reads in part, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of Yahweh, depicting his humanity. And the branch of Yahweh, as seen in the book of John, the foundation is Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2, which reads, 
In that day shall the branch of Yahweh be beautiful and glorious. This is referring to the deity of the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh. Remember that this is the morning of the third day, and I shall rise again. I am the resurrection. It, all of prophecy tells you that I shall rise again. It's all about that. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. No doubt about it. Again, I love you forever. Bless you forever. I remind you once again, my associates are children of the light. <laughs> That just brings uh, laughter to my heart, to my soul, to realize that at last, I have those of you that love peace. And I only want to be in the presence of those of you that love peace. I love you forever. Shalom Aleichem. Yahweh is the only true and living God. For he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He has sent his son, Yahweh ben Yahweh, who is the manifestation of Yahweh in the flesh. Yahweh ben Yahweh has come to set the captives free. It was Yahweh that led the children of Israel out of Egypt yesterday. And it is the same Yahweh that is leading the house of Israel out of the mindset of America today. Thank you for joining us in the universe of Yahweh. And now we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the east with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Come, let us pray. Tefillah, Ave Nu Shabbat Shemayim, Ye Kardesh Shemayaka, Tavo Malkuteaka, Ye Aseh Razonka, Ki Vashemayim Kain Ba'aretz, at Lekum Kukenu, Tain La Nu Hayom, Uslak La Nu, Ah Kati Enu, Kimosha Soul King, Gamanaknu, La Koteom La Nu, Vea Tefi Enu, La De Nisayom, Kim Kal Senu, Min Hara, Kilaka, Hamam Laha, Veha Givera, Veha Tiferet, Leolame, Olamin Sila. We thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal King who has so mercifully restored our souls within us, Selah. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father Yahweh and His Son Yahweh Ben Yahweh love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleichem! To order the companion book to the series, The Messiah Revealed, call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337. And when you call, ask about the special discount on the crucifixion of the Messiah. Videos of this program are available. When ordering, please refer to the program number on the screen. You can now access the divine mind of Yahweh ben Yahweh on the internet at the address on the screen.